Greetings, I'm Dr. Jörg Herman, Director of Cardio-Oncology at Mayo Clinic. Today I would like to talk to you about the emerging field of cardio-oncology or oncocardiology, the hand-in-hand -hand of cancer and the heart. This field has emerged to a large degree because of a steady increase in the number of cancer survivors over the past two decades, and not just short-term, but really long-term cancer survivors. This is not explained by an increased number in cancers, but rather by improvements in therapies and cure rates from about 40% range in the 1960s to the 70% range in the current era. For instance, uh, for breast cancer, the most common malignancy among women, five-year survival rates are now in excess of 80% as long as there's not widespread disease. Now this success has come at the cost of higher rates of side effects, which include the heart and the vasculature, as patients live longer to experience these side effects, and also just because of the very nature of these potent cancer therapies. Now the uh, side effects and the toxicities may or may not be noticed by the patients. For instance, a heart, the heart function can decline without any noticeable signs or symptoms. It has also been recognized that the longer the wait to realize and treat these declines in heart function, the lower the overall recovery potential and the worse the outcome. For this reason, a shift has now occurred towards closer and earlier cardiovascular follow-up of patients undergoing treatment with certain regimens and for certain types of cancers. Most of the time, this type of cardiovascular surveillance will include an ultrasound evaluation of the heart. And a classical example is that for patients undergoing treatment with trastuzumab or Herceptin for certain types of breast cancer. The risk of heart problems owing to this particular type of drug are fortunately confined to the active treatment period, but there are other types of cancer treatments which have far-reaching long-term effects. And particularly, these are the anticyclines and radiation therapy, in particular, radiation therapy to the chest. The consequences of these can appear even decades after and most often they present in the form of heart failure, but also in the form of vascular diseases elsewhere in case of radiation, for instance, the head and neck. This is of particular concern for childhood cancer survivors, but it's also of concern for adults with coexisting cardiovascular diseases or risk factors. In this context, it's pertinent to know that uh, after the age of 70, one in three men and one in four women will develop cancer. And it is this particular age group in which three in four are also affected by one form of cardiovascular disease or another, which generates really a high risk for cardiovascular side effects with any type of cancer therapy. At Mayo Clinic, we have established a cardio-oncology clinic which devotes full attention to these aspects of the care of cancer patients. A cardio-oncology team sees these patients at any point in time on their journey. A, before the initiation of cancer therapy to assess and mitigate the cardiovascular risks. B, during the time of cancer therapy to monitor and treat any potential cardiovascular toxicities, and C, after completion of cancer therapy as part of a survivorship program. With this extra line of service, we're striving to accomplish the best possible long-term outcome for those confronted with the two leading causes of death in the United States, cancer and cardiovascular diseases. Thank you so much for joining me today to learn more about our cardio-oncology services and making a difference in that the cancer patient of today will not be the heart disease patient of tomorrow. And if you would like to receive more information, please contact us at the information provided below.